Hey Finsters, today's lecture is about how to deal with websites that have implemented load more button for the purpose of pagination. So let's learn a bit about this load more button. Now this is the website that we have and as you can see it is filled with contents. Now when we scroll down we find this load more link in this website. Now let's see what happens when I click on this load more link. And as you can see more contents get populated in the web page as I clicked on this load more button. Now the second thing that you must focus upon is this URL. This URL right here. So please have a look as I click on this load more button. Does this URL change? So I'm going to click on load more. And more data got populated into the page. But this URL remained the same. So this means we cannot simply use this URL and scrape more and more data from each page one by one. Rather, we have to follow some different technique to be able to extract the data from each page. So that is what we will be learning in this lecture. So without further delay, let us have a look how we can do this. So as we have been doing so far, let us go ahead and follow a step by step approach which will make things simpler for us. So our first task is to go ahead and import the necessary libraries. And the only library that we need in this case is the requests library. Please note that we do not need the beautiful soup library in this case because you will soon find out that the response that we get is not in the form of an HTML page, rather it is in the form of JSON and we can directly extract data from that JSON. So let's go ahead and import request. Okay. It's now time to define our user agent. Defining a user agent is once again optional, but you must do it because this will help you to stop getting blocked from the website. So let's use our user agent. And now it is time to define the base URL. So this is where the actual game begins. So let's move on to our website to visualize how this is going to work. So this is our website right here. And now before anything else, you must understand that the way load more works is very similar to how infinite scroll works. The only difference is how loading the next page is triggered on the browser. Because we are not using a browser but a script, the only difference is going to be the analysis of the pagination and not the scraping itself. So to further understand this, our first task is to go ahead and right click on this web page and inspect it. This opens up developer tools. Now we head on to the networks tab and then we select XHR. Then go ahead and reload the page. And you will see a bunch of data getting populated in our developer tools. Now scroll down and click on load more. And as soon as you do that, please have a look on this developer tools section. More and more data gets populated here. So I'll click on load more once again and please have a look in this section of the screen. That is on the right section of the screen. I'm clicking on load more. And there we go. More and more data gets populated. So let's click on the first data that got populated here. Let's click on this. And as you can see that the response returned by each page is in the form of JSON. So this is the response right here. And from this response, we are going to extract the required data. And let's say that we want to extract the title from each page. So if you have a close look at this JSON data, then you'll find that this key title within it stores the name of the title. So this is what we want to extract from each page. Now there's one more thing that you must focus upon. So let me zoom this in for you. So if you have a look at this JSON data now, then we have this dictionary and within this dictionary, we have this key remaining, which states that there are 346 items still to be loaded. That means this key right here is going to be the defining factor, which will help us to know when or until when we have to keep scraping the data. That means as soon as this remaining becomes zero, in that case, we know that yes, this is when we will stop iterating and we will stop scraping any data. 
and this key which is within the list posts this title key stores the data that we want so now we know the parameters that will help us to write our script so let's not waste any more time and let's go ahead and write our script well we were talking about the base url and i got lost in explaining the logic to you so let's go ahead and also find out what would be the base url so is this right here the base url no absolutely not that is not at all the url from which we are going to scrape data rather click here right click go to copy select copy link address and then paste it in your browser and that will take you to this page which stores the entire json data now please have a look in this url you have page equals 2 that means this is the page 2 of our website so let's move on to page 1 and to do that simply change 2 to 1 and that takes us to page 1 so now you have a clear idea that if we keep changing this part right here that is the page number one by one then we can navigate to each page one by one so this is what we are going to do and what would be the base url it is nothing but this section of the url that is the section which does not include the page number so this one right here is our base url so let's copy this now let's define the base url so url equals and let's paste the url that we copied so this right here is our base url well it is now time to define our logic so let's go ahead and deal with it so what is the first page that we are going to navigate to it is page 1 So let's create a variable pg underscore num and within it let's store the first page which is one. Now let's say that we have a list title and within this list we are going to store the titles that is the data that we want to scrape. Well, now let's create a while loop which will iterate as long as we have data in our website. Within this loop, we are going to send the request. to each page one by one so in every iteration we are going to send a request to that current page so to do that we are going to use a get request so requests dot get and now let's feed in the url along with the page number okay so this right here is the base url and this pg underscore num will take care of the current page let's also feed in the user agent so to do that let's use the headers parameter and let's pass the user agent within it okay now we have successfully sent the get request now before proceeding further let's check the status so let's check response dot status underscore code that will help us to find out if we are getting the proper response or not if the status code is 200 then that means we are getting a proper response let's also use a break statement otherwise this loop will keep iterating infinitely okay now let's execute this code we have an error which says type error can only concatenate oh this is the error that we have so let's not concatenate in this way let's go ahead and use the format method to do this url dot format and then let's pass in the page underscore num variable so this will do nothing but club this base url along with this page number now let's execute our code once again and there we go we have the status code of 200 this means we are getting a proper response wonderful since the response that we are getting is in the form of json so let us go ahead and store that in our variable data so response so response.json will help us to store the content of response within this variable data in the form of json now let's visualize our website once again so this was the website and this is the json response that we were receiving and within this json response we have this list posts and within posts we have a dictionary once again which has the key title within it and this title is exactly what we are going to scrape so what we have to do is we have to go ahead and grab the entire json data and then from this entire json data we have to grab posts and after grabbing posts we have to grab this key title which will help us to scrape the required data so let's go ahead and do that let's create a variable d and within d let's go ahead and grab the list posts that is 
This list posts is what will be stored within the variable D. So let's do that. D equals data that is the entire JSON and then we want to grab the list posts. Now in order to fetch the data from this list posts, we have to go over all the dictionaries that are present within posts. So if you have a look here, then this list posts has numerous other dictionaries and that's what we are going to iterate over. So for that, I'm going to use a loop for I in D and now I'll start extracting the key value pairs. So for I or for key comma value in I dot items. Okay, this will help me to extract the key value pairs from each dictionary. And now I'll check if the key is equal to title. In that case, I'll go ahead and append the title to our list title. For that, I'm going to use title dot append. And within this, I'll simply append the value. Also, I'll make sure that there are no trailing spaces. So I'll use the strip method. Well, this was it for storing the title in our list title. So this means until now we have properly scraped all the titles present in the website. But a question arises here is that how long do we iterate? That is how long will this loop go on? If we do not define any condition, then this will keep on iterating and we will keep on getting data and eventually land into an error. So I have already explained how we can end this loop. Let me explain that to you once again. So if you have a look at this entire JSON data, then you'll find that we have this key remaining. If the value of remaining is zero, then we can say that yes, there is no more data that is present in the website and we are done with our scraping. So that is the exact condition which will help us to exit out of the loop. So let's go ahead and define that. So this is what we are going to do. If data dot get remaining will help us to grab the value stored within this key remaining. And then we are also converting it to an integer and then checking if these values are greater than zero. If they are greater than zero, then we go ahead and navigate to the next page. And how do we navigate to the next page? To do that, we send another get request. As you can see that we have already defined this line that will help us to send the get request. So all we have to do within this if block is to change the page number. So in the first iteration, if we are on page number one, so as you can see, initially page underscore pg underscore num is one, we can go ahead and increment the value of pg underscore num by one. So that will help us to move on to the next page when we move into the next literary. Well, if this condition is no longer true, that means when the remaining key is equal to zero, in that case, we simply go ahead and use the break statement to exit out of the loop. Well, we are done with our logic. All that remains to be done is to print the output. So for that, we can simply iterate over the list title, which stores all the titles within it. So for I in title and then print each title one by one. So that's how easy it is. Well, that's it. And now, as I can see that since I use the format method here, I should go ahead and use the curly braces within our base URL, because this is where the page number will get concatenated. So this is the syntax that you have to use if you are using the format method to concatenate the base URL along with the page number. So please note or please have a close look at this URL base URL that I have defined. And if you make an error here, then it will not work for you. So please keep a track of the base URL and keep a track of how you are concatenating the page number along with the base URL. Okay. Now let's execute this piece of code. And there we go. We have successfully extracted all the titles from each and every page of the website and printed them on our output screen. So let's say that this is the first title and let's check if it was correctly extracted or not. So this was our page and this right here is the first title. 
and this is exactly the same title that was extracted by our script. This means the script is working perfectly fine and you can definitely use it. With that, we come to the end of this lecture. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any doubts, please feel free to ask them and I'll try my best to resolve all your queries. Thank you.